The Nissan Leaf 2 and road trip number two. Yesterday, I went up to Euroa and well, that was a interesting sort of event. Good long road trip, 16.6 .6 kilowatt hours by 100K. So today, I'm gonna to do a trip in a bit of a hobbit fashion, there and back again. And helping me along the way, it's gonna be these two little munchkins. Okay, so I'm gonna explain today's trip. I've charged the car to 90%. I'm gonna reset the odometer to zero so we get a better rep representation of what's gonna happen. And we're gonna drive all the way to Gisborne, so that's gonna be up an incline, have some yummy afternoon tea at Solate, one of my favorite places up there. Then we're gonna go up a mountain, that's Mount Macedon. And then we're gonna come back home. All in all, about oh, 80 something kilometers and no charging. Now for this thing, with a WLTP cycle of like 270 kilometers, if we have 90% charge, mm, 240 kilometers, it should be able to do it quite easily, right? But going up a hill, uh, like a hill, a mountain, it's really gonna challenge it. So we'll see how we do. Are you excited? Yeah! Yeah! It's about to rain. <laughs> All right, you excited, Amy? Yeah! It's All about right. to rain. It's about to rain, and I washed the car to get all the beauty shots for the review video. Mm. So be it. Are you Let's... gonna bring a drone? No, no drone today. <laughs> Oh, sadness. Um, we've just come to so large and it's closed. No! Yeah, no. Yeah. no. no. Where to find somewhere different? Suggestions? Yeah. Comments down below. Few moments later. Okay, first stop is in Gisborne and instead of Solate we've had to come to three little pigs and uh, so far the car has gone from like 92% battery to about 72%. Uh, half an hour driving only 32 kilometers and averaging 64 kilometers per hour. So that's 22.7 kilowatt hours per 100k. Seems like a lot but we have gone up a hill and it's going to get even worse, a lot worse going up Mount Macedon. So I'd be curious to see when we do our second stop how the batteries go in them. But in the meantime, our food's come. So let's enjoy that. Okay, we're about to go up Mount Macedon now officially. We've got 61% state of charge. It says 133 kilometers um, from the top to the bottom. Okay, I marked this. It's 1462 kilometers on the odometer so far. So when we get to the top, we'll see how many kilometers it is from here to there. So your job, David, 1462. Remember that number, okay? Okay. Good boy. All right, let's do this. Okay, so we've got to the top of Mount Macedon. It was only a 10 kilometer journey, but we zapped off 30 kilometers of range and about 13% of the battery. So we've now only got 100 kilometers left and 48%. But remember, we're gonna, we, we all went uphill there. And it's like a 12% gradient at least. So now when we go down, be curious to see when we get to the bottom, how much range we actually have left. All 
All right, we're down the bottom of the mountain now, and we've got six kilometers back into the battery. It's uh, gone up to 50%, and in terms of range, it says we'll do 106 kilometers, so comfortably we'll get us home. I should note that for this journey, we've had the um, heater on, um, it's currently running the AC to keep the windows demisted, and I'm just driving it normally, but I've gone no faster than 110 kilometers per hour, I think, from memory. So, so far, so good. Let's go home. All right, we're back and we arrive with about 12% battery remaining or 36 kilometers as per the suggested range by the car. Um, it said consumption wise, we did this trip 18.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and we drove 139 kilometers uh, for this journey. So, uh, doing a bit of number crunching, I think it's about 25% above what the um, suggested uh, kilowatt hours per 100 Ks should be. And with all that in mind, I think it was a bit of calculation. If I had charged the car from zero to 100%, we could have gone today a total of 216 kilometers. Now, bearing in mind, this was mainly freeway driving up to about 100 kilometers per hour, 110 kilometers per hour maximum. Uh, we did some stopping, especially coming home. I uh, did some uh, B-roll footage uh, for the review that will be coming out very soon. Uh, if you wanna see that, check up here somewhere. It might be uh, published live by the time you see this video. And uh, we had the heater set to 22 degrees, had the air con on because it was uh, misting up because I had three other passengers uh, in the car with me. And uh, I was just treating it like a normal journey. And it, it was quite capable, very comfortable, and livable, essentially, definitely. Very livable. Um, is it the car for you? Depends. I'm, I'm still firmly, I think, in the opinion that if you live in an urban setting, uh, suburbia, in the city, this car is definitely for you. You're gonna save yourself a lot of money compared to um, going up to the Kona EV or the Tesla Model 3, which start at $70,000, whereas this is, this is 54,000. You know, if you do like 40 Ks per day or even less, you could go a whole five days or so without needing to charge it. And then you could charge up on the weekend when maybe if you have solar PV, you can recharge with the sun. But, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll put all my thoughts together in a big review and watch out for that very soon. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. It supports the channel and I really do appreciate it. And heck, if you really want to do something really awesome, go over to Patreon. I've got a Patreon channel and uh, you can, but there you get behind the scenes stuff, perks, polls and more. And if you do nothing, be good, be green.